The leaders also made some pretty pointed statements tonight about tax cuts and spending. Who will cut more? Who will spend more? Amanda Lang is checking that. Okay, Mr. Harper, it's right to you for the first response. It was the first topic of the debate, tax cuts for corporations, and has been a recurring theme in the campaign. Stephen Harper's comments. There are no corporate tax cuts right now. We want to keep rates where they are. Don't stand up to scrutiny. Corporate taxes have been falling for four years in Canada. From a previous level of 21 percent, they were reduced first to 19 and a half, then last year to 18 percent, and this year to the current 16 and a half percent. And if nothing changes, they will fall again next year to 15 percent. That makes it one of the lowest among G7 nations. By comparison, the U.S. rate is 35 percent. But while Jack Layton and Michael Ignatieff would raise the tax again to 19 and a half and 18 percent, respectively. Let's get back to the question. It was a question about why you could possibly make sense of six billion dollars of corporate tax breaks. Michael Ignatieff has a weaker case on tax cuts. The Liberal Party opted not to try to kill those cuts when they had the chance in 2007. And again, when Ignatieff was leader in 2009, they supported them. Both the Bloc and NDP were opposed. Meanwhile, both Leighton and Ignatieff took a jab at spending on new F-35 jets planned by the Conservatives. You put those jets out to competitive tender. You save more billions. But there's no evidence that a tender process would lower the tab and could actually cost more since the F-35s are part of a consortium purchased by eight other countries. Billions of dollars that you want to spend on these jets down the road will have to come from health care and education. And there isn't any evidence that the jets would drain any budget other than defense's $22 billion one, which, once the combat mission in Afghanistan ends, would have a billion dollars a year freed up. Even counting the cost of the training mission, it's hundreds of millions of dollars a year saved that could be spent on jets. Amanda Lang, CBC News, Toronto. Those leaked drafts of the Auditor General's report that came up in tonight's debates are now the subject of an investigation. The AG's office ordered an internal probe after two drafts of her G8 audits were given to various media organizations. And as Lori Graham tells us, what's in those drafts continues to raise questions. Exactly who decided how millions of your dollars would be spent? Inside this building is the office of Auditor General Sheila Fraser. She's not talking publicly about the leaked drafts of her G8 spending report. But she has responded by launching an internal investigation. The first draft was leaked to the Canadian press. CTV is reporting the second leak of a later draft came to its network from the Conservative government. Former Infrastructure Minister John Baird says he did see a later draft. I have seen the follow the next draft of that report. I can't say what's in it. No one but Fraser has the authority to release drafts of the report, but someone did, and that's illegal under the Secrets Act. People will lose confidence in the independence and the integrity of the auditor. Parts of the two leaked drafts that have been reported appear consistent on some facts. In both, Fraser questions how the government decided to fund 32 projects in and around Huntsville, Ontario, in advance of the G8, out of the more than 200 applications. But when she asked the Infrastructure Department for documentation, they told her they had nothing to do with it. The department did not manage the application intake or the identification of priorities for funding and therefore was not able to provide us with this documentation. John Baird says he made the final decision. If that's the case, a minister personally approving contracts without the scrutiny of his department to do That's a, a whole other job. issue, according and, to uh, Ian and Lee. Of course, questions can be raised whether the due diligence checks were undertaken or not. All federal parties agree the Auditor General should release her report immediately. Today, the NDP sent a letter to the AG's office asking for a meeting with Sheila Fraser to discuss how that might work. But Fraser is in Nunavut, so it won't happen this week, if at all. Lori Graham, CBC News, Ottawa.